Coming up, we bring you breaking news from the Texas Tech campus. And later, we tell you about a local campus group making a difference. We take a look at one Iowa football player's inspiring comeback. And we have results from Iowa Volleyball's matches this weekend. Iowa City is in for a very rainy day. I'll tell you more in weather. All that and more is coming up. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good morning and thanks for tuning in to this live Tuesday edition of Daily Iowa TV. I'm Becca Scadding. And I'm Noah Gowdy. We begin this morning with some breaking news from Texas. After what was supposed to be a student welfare checkup, a campus officer is dead and the rest of the Texas Tech community is shaken. That's right, Becca. Just before 8 p.m. Monday night, campus officers visited the room of freshman Hollis Daniels after receiving a tip of a possible drug affiliation. The officers were completing a student welfare check in his room when they found drugs and drug paraphernalia. Daniels was taken to the police station for questioning when he pulled out a gun and shot a campus officer in the head, leading to their death. After shooting the officer, Daniels fled the scene on foot. Texas Tech issued an emergency lockdown and warned students to stay clear of the area. Daniels was found about an hour later and taken into custody. Shortly after the arrest, the lockdown was lifted, and as of now, classes will continue as normal today at Texas Tech. I want to express my appreciation to the Texas Tech Police Department, the Lubbock Police Department, the Sheriff's Department, and other local, state, and federal agencies that have assisted us during this tragic event. This case is still under investigation, so stick with the Daily Iowan as this story further develops. Yesterday, a rally took place on the UI Pentecrest hosted by the Native American Student Association. The group was, in, was standing in solidarity for Indigenous peoples' rights. October 9th is Columbus Day, and the group wanted to raise awareness on how Indi indigenous people have suffered from colonialism. During the rally, speakers held prayers, gave speeches, and read poetry. On Thursday, the group will be having a feast to continually raise awareness for the group and their online campaign. For more on this story, pick up today's copy of The Daily Iowan or go online at dailyiowan.com. Last month, Hurricane Irma hit the island of Puerto Rico, causing millions of dollars of damage which will take years to repair. And even though Puerto Rico is far from here, a U.S. student organized a group to help with relief efforts. The humanitarian and emergency response team was formed by a U.I. medical student. The group was formed after members were not satisfied with President Trump's efforts to help the victims of the hurricane. Tonight, the group will host its first event at 530 in the Kelch Conference Room. Guest speakers will be at the event along with the film screening. Their first task is to help find resources for Puerto Rico. To find out more about this group and this evening's events, pick up a copy of today's Daily Iowan. I know we've seen many hurricanes over the past couple of weeks, and now I'm hearing we're seeing some wildfires. Yes, we actually have some wildfires going on over on the West Coast currently in the United States. So let's toss over to Bo Bowman in the weather studio to find out more. Bo? Thanks, Noah and Becca. At least 10 people are dead in Northern California due to sweeping wildfires Eight counties, including wine regions such as Sonoma and Napa, have been scorched with 50,000 acres burning between those areas alone. An estimated 20,000 people have evacuated and around 1,500 homes and businesses have been burned. Lack of humidity, high winds, and intense heat waves have contributed to the extreme conditions. Firefighters are currently attempting to contain the blaze. Now here in Iowa City, it's 51 degrees right now, and not only will you want a coat today, but you'll probably want one with a hood. Looking at thunderstorms throughout the day and possibly over an inch of rain. Temperatures might only get up to around 58 degrees, and we can expect the rain to continue into tonight with around, temps around 55 degrees. Then tomorrow the rain should stop, and we'll see a cloudy day with a high of 64. Now looking at our extended forecast, Thursday will have partly cloudy skies and a high of 70. Then on Friday, temps will heat up all the way to about 80 degrees with more partly cloudy skies. It'll cool down to a high of 70 on Saturday with lots of wind and scattered thunderstorms. Sunday might still be a little bit rainy with scattered showers and a high of 64. So we're looking at another mixed week with a little bit more rain. I would recommend enjoying the warmer temperatures on Friday. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Thanks, Bo. Tonight, The King and I makes its debut at Hancher Auditorium. 
This six-day tour is the first Broadway musical to hit the Hunter stage for the 2017-2018 season. This musical, composed by Rodgers and Hammerstein, is about a widow who moves to Bangkok and develops a friendship with the king. Tickets are still available for all six shows, and students can receive a discount with their student ID. Saturday's show will also feature an American Sign Language interpreter. To purchase tickets, you can visit hancher.uiowa.edu or visit the box office at Hancher from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Are midterms stressing you out? Are you lacking sleep in order to get as much study in as possible? Well, the coffee crawl may be the event for you. This week, the Campus Activities Board is hosting its first ever coffee crawl. By purchasing a cab mug for $5, you will receive a $2 discount at each participating coffee shop during this week. To find out where you can purchase a cab mug, at, be sure to visit University of Iowa Cab on Facebook and Twitter. Today's participa participating coffee shop is the Java House. Tomorrow is Prairie Lights, and on Wednesday, you can receive discounts at High Ground Cafe. The final day wraps up on Friday, and it will take place at Cortado. Be sure to purchase a cab mug so that you are ready for your midterms. And America's favorite new college football tradition, the University of Iowa's first quarter wave, is still receiving national attention. That's right, Becca. On Sunday, Anthony Rizzo, the Chicago Cubs' first baseman, shared a video of the wave on his Instagram page and said, quote, this is by far the best college tradition of all time, end quote. The University of Iowa marching band also joined in on the wave in a unique way. During their halftime performance on Saturday's homecoming game against Illinois, the Hawkeye marching band formed a hand waving while performing a reprise of the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour. Well, that's pretty amazing. I was unfortunately not able to be there for that first quarter wave, but I heard you were there, Becca. Yeah, I was at the game, and uh, actually the marching band, the wave was awesome this week. Yeah, let's toss it over to Alexis and Will in the sports studio with more. Guys. Hey, guys, it was so nice to finally see Iowa get their first Big Ten win of the season against Illinois. And one player's return from injury made it just that much more special. That's right, Alexis. Brandon Snyder tore his ACL last spring and is already back on the field making big-time plays for his team. Mary-Kate Aaron has more. An ACL tear normally takes one year to recover from, unless, of course, your Hawkeye safety, Brandon Snyder. Snyder made his comeback debut just after five and a half months and did it in high fashion, having an 89-yard interception return. I was just trying to take in the moment, um, like I said, just taking the stands. I mean, just how cool it is to be back in Kinnick Stadium and be healthy. Um, it's something that you miss, it's something that I take for granted. But I appreciate a lot more through this, and I'm thankful for that. For sure. I'm a big believer in, in my faith, I'm a big believer in God, and I think that um, He created this, uh, and it's from Him. I believe that He's the one that got me through it. Um, and I know that I wouldn't have been able to do it day after day if it weren't work with my faith. And so I think that's, you know, first and foremost, the reason. Um, after that, you know, it's definitely our training staff, Coach Doyle. I think there's a lot of people in my corner, and I think that was a, a huge reason that I got back. It, you know, it's not me. It comes down to all the people around me. And I'm so thankful for all the people that helped me get back because um, this moment's priceless, that's for sure. As Snyder is thankful for everyone who got him to be where he is today, his teammates are equally as thankful to have him back on the field. I'm living with him. It's uh, been tough just to watch him you know, go through that injury through thick and thin and trying to encourage him and the hard work he's put in to come back even this early and then having, you know, coming up with a play like that to kind of you know, swing the momentum of the game. Just, you know, super proud of him and you know, super happy for him to have that opportunity. It's pretty special. You know, he, he, uh, you know, he busted his butt to get back and, you know, did everything he could for the team and um, when he was out and, you know, it, I don't think there's any better way for him to come back. You know, I don't think anybody thought he'd be that back that fast. Uh, but he's a strong dude, um, and he did everything, you know, all the little things right to be able to come back this early. I'm uh, just really happy for him. You know, he worked really hard to get back to this point, um, and just to be able to go out there and play to begin with is so huge and, you know, really exciting for him. But then, you know, have a, a pick six like that, um, it just makes a moment even greater. So we're all really happy for him, and, you know, it's good to have him back. Snyder and the Hawks will have this week to rest and recover before having to get ready to take on Northwestern on October 21st. Reporting inside of Kinnick Stadium, this has been Mary-Kate Herrian for Daily Iowan TV Sports. If Snyder did what he did in his just his first game being back, I am very excited to see what he'll do the rest of his career at Iowa. Yeah. On Saturday, the Iowa football team experimented with, us, with special teams a little bit. Daily Iowan TV's Bo Bowman has more. Head coach Kirk Ferentz has always been known to play conservatively. But throughout the years, we have seen him step out of his shell 
once or twice. We saw it last week in a fake field goal against Michigan State, and again this week with Illinois with a surprise onside kick and fake punt. Well, yeah, I mean, those are recommendations from the staff, and, and uh, well, I'm all for them. Uh, but I, I feel even better when we do them well in practice. And, and uh, Miguel was kicking that, that onside kick. He really did a nice job all week. So it's a little easier for me to have, you know, give it the okay uh, when you see it a couple times during the week. After the game, head coach Kirk Barron said he was proud of how the team played on both sides of the ball and special teams, where we saw some new Hawkeyes stepping into some big roles. Iowa punter Colton Rastetter was benched during the game this week after only averaging 39.7 yards per punt and was replaced by freshman Ryan Gersande. And maybe his presence served as a distraction on the fake punt. And the fake punt something we, it's in our playbook, but um, yeah, we thought it was just, you know, maybe there and then uh, in that situation right there, we just felt like we needed a little, little juice, something maybe to get us going here and then. Yeah. I mean, we've been working on it a lot ever since fall camp, so I mean, I guess it was a good time to call it. Coach Ferentz called it, and we just executed it. With the Dean of College Football being a loose cannon on special teams so far this year, it should make for a fun team to watch. From Kennick Stadium, Bo Bowman, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Interesting take on the special teams unit. They're usually lost in the shuffle between the offense and the defense. Yeah, Kinnick wasn't the only place packed with Hawks fans on Saturday. The volleyball team had a big game and attempted to draw the largest crowd in program history in the Carver Hawkeye Arena. And they did just that. Daily Island TV's Taylor Van Fleet has the coverage. The Hawks knew they'd have their hands full on Saturday night when number four ranked Nebraska came into Carver. But even a record breaking attendance crowd was not enough for Iowa to pull off the upset. 4,729. That was the number of fans who came into Carver to watch the top-ranked Cornhuskers take on the Hawkeyes Saturday night. Although the Hawks were unable to get a win in the match, head coach Bon Shemansky said that this was a big night for the Iowa volleyball program and its future moving forward. Last year we set program records for wins and things that our team was doing, but then also our fans are helping us set records for, for the environment that we can create. And every recruit that comes in here and sees a home match in an environment like that, they know that this is big time. Iowa lost to number four Nebraska three sets to none, but they were competitive with the Huskers the whole way through, giving fans that hard-fought match they were hoping for and some reassurance that this program can compete in the Big Ten. Our team is showing that we belong and uh, we're competitive and we're winning in the Big Ten and just really love what we're doing. Now the Hawks will turn their focus to the Hoosiers as they travel to Bloomington this Wednesday. Reporting for Iowa Volleyball, this has been Taylor Van Fleet with Daily Iowan TV Sports. The Hawks will have it a little e bit easier tomorrow night when they finally face an unranked team for the first time in over two weeks, but they're still have to bring their A game against Indiana because, as we know, no one comes easy in the big time. Yeah, tune in tomorrow for, South, for results from softball's games this weekend. And be sure to check out the Daily Iowans YouTube page tonight for another episode of Top 10 Plays of the Week with our own Bo Bowman and Zach Lomit. Guys, back to you. And that'll do it for this edition of Daily Iowan TV. Stay up to date on all the latest news by checking us out at dailyiowan.com and by picking up your copy of the Daily Iowan. And if you're on the run, you can catch our newscast every morning at 8.30 on KRUI 89.7 FM. For Daily Iowa TV, I'm Noah Gowdy. And I'm Becca Scadden. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Long before we knew they existed, Dottie Ray, a revolutionary trailblazer and Iowa City radio personality for over 50 years. Foundation builder for journalists. Please join us in sharing Dottie Ray's story on the big screen. After the showing, a panel discussion about Dottie's life will follow. It's all part of Habitat for Humanities. She built the future. For more information, please contact Habitat for Humanity.